Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good evening. I'm Mark Scott and I'm uh, Chairman of the, the Board here at Wesley uh, Community Services and delighted to be uh, to welcome you all here tonight for the Gordon Moyes Lecture, the first uh, Gordon Moyes Lecture here at Wesley Mission. And we're delighted that the uh, Treasurer of Australia, Scott Morrison, uh, is here with us today. Now, and I, the only thing I'd say to the Treasurer is that if rather than speaking, he'd volunteered to cook his now famous Sri Lankan fish curry. <laughs> Uh, we'd have had to move downstairs to the bigger theatre, but maybe, uh, <laughs> maybe next time. Uh, what an honour it is to just be able to say uh, a few words about the Reverend Dr Gordon Moyes, AC, uh, and to welcome uh, his, his wife, Beverly, and members of the, the Moyes family with us here tonight. You know, as, as we all know, uh, Gordon made an outstanding contribution as superintendent here at Wesley Mission from 1979 through to 2005. And what an extraordinary time of ministry and leadership that was here at Wesley Mission. And what an extraordinary impact and influence Gordon had on Sydney and on New South Wales and on Australia. He really was a giant presence in our midst. Uh, many of you will uh, remember him as such a powerful speaker, a Christian speaker, an evangelist, someone who preached the gospel, someone who led uh, such inspiring work, fulfilling the great traditions here at uh, Wesley Mission and um, coming on the, the legacy of Alan Walker and others who'd gone before to really minister to people uh, in greatest need in our community. And the word and deed ministry that continues here at Wesley Mission today was so furthered and advanced by the leadership that Gordon uh, brought uh, to uh, Wesley Mission. But he was more than a minister, more than a leader. He had a strong media profile through his presence in the media and then through his own radio program for, for many, many years, topping the ratings here in Sydney on uh, 2GB. And then, of course, later in his career as a politician, as a member of the Legislative Council uh, in New South Wales. Um, such a complete life in ministry and service as evidenced here at Wesley Mission. And so uh, it's appropriate that we uh, inaugurate a lecture to uh, remember Gordon, to reflect on the extraordinary contribution that he made to Wesley Mission and to God's work uh, here in Sydney and across the country, and to um, invite a leading citizen to come and speak to us. And so we're delighted that the Treasurer is here uh, with us tonight. John Howard said when um, Gordon concluded his time here at Wesley Mission that he said his work on the community and business partnerships, which has brought together some of the most successful and affluent businessmen in this country, with people who've given their lives to Christian service and service, not necessarily always Christian service, but service in the community. That's what Gordon bought. That organisation has played a very significant role in helping to shape a different approach to giving and philanthropy in our community. And I think it's particularly appropriate that the Treasurer speaks to us tonight because we're entering an era where increasingly organisations like Wesley Mission work in partnership with government, bringing together a different kind of partnership in order to help meet need, the need of um, help meet um, the needs of those who are in great need in our uh, community. So, Treasurer, welcome and thank you for being with us tonight. But, but before we hear from the Treasurer, uh, it's an opportune time to remember just a little bit more about Gordon's life and service. So I'd like you to, to pay attention to the video here. The origins of Wesley Mission stretch back to the first Methodist church established in Sydney in 1812. Since our foundation, we have been a community of hope and grace providing care to those who are frail, lonely, disconnected and marginalised in Sydney and beyond. And throughout our history, we have been guided by a strong line of faithful, passionate leaders. 1812 was a time when liberty, grace and possibility were alive in the early colony. Convinced of the need for someone to guide them, the early Methodists wrote a compelling and successful appeal to the British Methodist Conference to send a minister to the new colony. 
the Reverend Samuel Lee arrived in Australia in 1815. In 1884, W.G. Taylor was appointed superintendent. A new word and deed policy was developed, committed evangelism coupled with serving the practical needs of the community. It was he who coined the term, a living Christ for a dying world. Taylor retired after 22 years and the Reverend P.J. Stephen took on superintendency. He was followed by the Reverend Samuel J. Hoban, who led Wesley Mission from 1915 to 1921 through the difficult years of the First World War. The Reverend H.C. Foreman succeeded him for a 10-year term until 1931. The Reverend R.J. Williams was superintendent for the next six years, serving as leader throughout the Depression. In 1938, the Reverend F. H. Raywood was appointed superintendent, leading until 1958, when the Reverend Alan Walker took up the position. A passionate and outspoken leader, Walker used the media extensively and attracted both praise and criticism for his dynamic leadership style. Into these shoes, the young Gordon Moyes stepped. It was in 1978 that the Reverend Gordon Moyes began his 27-year tenure of superintendency, overseeing the enrichment of Wesley Mission's media profile and continuing the strong word and deed ministry of Wesley Mission. Gordon produced a wide range of television shows, documentaries and media programming. He had a regular program on 2GB and developed a successful national weekly television ministry, Turn Round Australia which ran for 27 years. Gordon recognised the capacity film had to tell the Christian story. He set up Wesley Film Productions and produced a series of documentaries on the New Testament that were filmed on location in the Mediterranean and the Middle East. Throughout his superintendency, Gordon was a great advocate for those in need. He expanded employment services through Wesley Uniting Employment, set up Wesley Family Centres to meet the needs of local communities and developed homeless accommodation services for families and young people. In 1979, Gordon commissioned a report into the dangers of credit card debt and established Credit Line Counselling Service, a free service for those in financial stress. A politically astute church leader, Gordon had access to both state and Commonwealth politicians on matters of social concern and used his media skills to speak out and build public awareness. He was appointed to the Prime Minister's Task Force on Youth Homelessness and in this area, and many others, was able to achieve great public policy outcomes for vulnerable and disadvantaged people in the community. In 1988, Moyes oversaw the extensive redevelopment of the old Lyceum Theatre in Pitt Street, Sydney. A new building was designed and built, containing a theatre, church, head office and conference centre. These significant developments advanced the work and presence of Wesley Mission in quite an unprecedented way. Gordon Moyes retired from superintendency in 2005 and Keith Garner took up the role, a position that he continues in today. It is remarkable to see how things have grown at Wesley Mission. Today, more than 2,000 staff and 3,000 volunteers continue in the footsteps of those who have gone before, caring for those in need, and sharing the generous love of Jesus Christ without fear or favour. Tonight, we celebrate Gordon Moy's leadership at Wesley Mission and recognise the significant contribution he has made to the Australian community.